Hi, hello, welcome to the Tuesday tag video uh, for the 19th of September. Now, uh, I was tagged by uh, Jonathan Rossignol, um, so uh, I didn't actually know that Jonathan watched my channel, so uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'll tag his video down below and, uh, and his channel so you can um, go and give him a look and see what he's like. Um, and he tagged me in the All About the Titles uh, book tag. So this one is specifically kind of um, lots of different questions about book titles um, that kind of to prompt you to talk about different books. Now, um, I'm going to just run through these quite quickly um, because not all of these I've read. So a lot of them uh, I am planning to read because I think that People are kind of more interested in what you're planning to read than what you've read. And on top of that, um, I struggle to find books that fit the titles for a lot of them. So uh, question one is a book with a one word title. Now, I talked a little bit about this in uh, my initial kind of what I'm going to be reading later this year, physical TBR video. We're, and this one is the second book in the Alex Vera series, Cursed by Benedict Jacker. Uh, now, uh, I have talked about this a few times. I didn't love the first um, Alex Vera's novel. I saw a lot of potential, um, and which is why I'm continuing on the series. And also it's kind of like the Dresden Files methadone <laughs> um, to kind of give me a story in that sort of mould, because as you know, I love the Dresden Files. So, um, Cursed by Benedict Jacker is going to be my answer for a one-word book title. I'm hoping to read this by the end of the year. As you, you can probably tell, it's a library book, so I've only got so many times I can keep renewing it before uh, the library gets annoyed at me. So I will need to uh, read this at some point in the next couple of months, probably. Next book is a, a book with a phrase in the title. Now, <laughs> I wasn't 100% sure what this question meant. Um, so what I thought I would do is pick a um, kind of a, a book that I had on the shelf that had kind of a play on a popular phrase. So the phrase I chose, I say phrase, the phrase is all you need is love and the book that I chose to fit this um, phrase in the title prompt was the manga All You Need Is Kill by Takeshi Obata and Hiroshi Sakurazaka. So All You Need Is Kill is something that you may be somewhat familiar with because it was adapted into the Tom Cruise and Emily Blunt movie Edge of Tomorrow, which uh, they have since retitled for um, home video as Live, Die, Repeat. Um, so it's a... Um, the uh, I have actually read this one. So a lot of the books on this list um, I haven't read. But this one in particular I have read. And this one's excellent story it's very very similar to the movie obviously because with comics and manga it's quite easy to adapt into a movie because you basically have a storyboard already um and uh, the story is genuinely really good so it's about this soldier who um comes into this big battle and during the battle something happens to him and the every single time from then on that he dies he returns to that moment in the battle and he meets up with another character who this has already happened to. Uh, and she is, um, but she's uh, not currently uh, in that repeat mode. And obviously they can't sync up because when one of them dies, the other one will, you know, the other one's still alive. It's really interesting. Um, so uh, I've read this one. It's a really short read because it's a manga, even though it's quite a chunky one. You can read this in like a day. The artwork is genuinely really cool. So, I mean, like, here's a really good example. Like, this dude here looks awesome. And there's some great action. 
Uh, there's some like really cool like massive um, like big huge spreads and um, it's all in black and white as all manga is or well, most manga is um, but uh, yeah I really really like this manga I would recommend it to anyone it's a one shot it's completely finished it's done you can just go out pick up this one manga volume and read an entire complete story which is not always the case with manga um, let's go on to the next prompt. So the next prompt is a book with a sentence in the title. So for this one, um, I chose 16 Ways to Defend a Walled City by KJ Parker. So this is one that was recommended by Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews. Uh, the title really caught my attention because it's quite fun. It's very, you know, like clickbait SEO article and uh, I do marketing for my day job, so that's kind of um, that's kind of a fun uh, link in. Uh, I actually know nothing about this book apart from that it's by KJ Parker, who is uh, the pseudonym of Tom Holt, uh, a British kind of comedy parody sort of writer. Um, so I'm expecting it from a the title and the fact that he's a parody and comedy writer to be uh, that it'll be a funny book um, and uh, I also really enjoy seed stories anyway so I really like the idea of kind of like a, a fun look at seed stories. Number four is a book with an unusual word in the title. Now for this one um, I picked Gunmetal Gods by Zamil Akhtar now this is one that I actually started listening to the audiobook. So I read the I read listened to the first chapter of an audiobook while I was on a uh, a long drive for work to go to an event. And I uh, really enjoyed the first chapter and I thought it was re I was a really good concept and uh, I liked the kind of character that you meet in that first chapter. But I then as I was continuing to drive it shifted into the second chapter and uh, about, I don't know, five minutes in, I realised that I hadn't really been paying attention, uh, which unfortunately is a big problem for me with audiobooks. I thought I might be able to get over the hump uh, and listen to them in the car. But I think that after so long, my, my after, you know, not a particularly long period of time, my brain kind of starts to wander and I start paying more attention to... Uh, start kind of thinking about things that I'm seeing rather than just watching the road and driving and listening to the audiobook. Um, uh, so unfortunately, it looks like audiobooks might still be off the menu. Um, but I do still have the audiobook. I actually bought the uh, book on Kindle ages ago, so I could also read it on Kindle. I'd really like to do that um, because, as I said, the the concept's really cool. It's kind of like a kind of a mecha Cthulhu. Um, Arabian night style genre mashup and honestly that all just sounds really cool um, number five is a book with a name in the title so for this one I went for The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch this is a real booktube darling a lot of people love this book I actually read I would say about half of this book um, maybe 15 years ago, when I, mm, uh, that's probably too long ago, 10 years ago maybe, but this was when I was just really not in the groove of reading books, and the fact that I got halfway, uh, it probably tells me a lot about how good that book was, and everybody says it's excellent, so I feel like that's kind of a slam dunk to add to future TBRs, I don't think I'm going to be reading it this year because I've got a lot of stuff I want to get through. I've got a lot of sequels that I want to read and even, you know, threequels and beyond. I would like to finish up or get up to date on a lot of my series before I start anything new. Next up, we have a book with a made up word in the title, which is uh, something I had a lot to choose from because of, you know, reading a lot of fantasy. But I thought I would pick out this one because this is one that I had on my physical TBR that I'd like to read in the near future, in the, you know, at some point in the future, which is Curse of the Mistwraith by Jani Wirtz. 
Now, I bought this one from secondhand from a very cool um, sci-fi, uh, fantasy, uh, gaming, comic book shop in uh, the, the city over from the town I live in. Um, they had a load of old fantasy novels for like one or two pounds each. And I found this one and the Dragonbone Chair both for a pound fifty, I think. Um, and they were the only ones where I recognised the title and they were also the first in the series because I didn't want to like start buy a book that was halfway through a series just because it was cheap. Uh, that's kind of silly in my opinion. Um, so I bought these two uh, and they are on my Sunday TBR. So they're not on any sort of list that I'm planning to read soon, but they're something that I want to read eventually. Next up. Um, so this one is a book with a pun in the title and whenever I think of puns I think of like comedy books and um, the most famous kind of fantasy series of comedy books is Discworld and I was looking through the titles of Discworld books to find one that was a, a really good pun and I think my favourite one that I saw was Equal Rights. Now Equal Rights is um, the first book in the witches storyline in Discworld. Um, everyone says to start Discworld with Guards Guards. Now I normally I do listen to reading advice. So if someone says you should read these books in this order because that's the good order, I normally do that. But I I want to read Discworld like people who read Discworld from the start read it. So I'd like to read it in publishing order. I think that's the best way to read The Cosmere. Um, I think that's the best way to read most um, kind of multiverse style, or not multiverse, but like multi-story, multi-arc um, series. Um, and it kind of comes back also from like uh, my very long history of reading comic books where you really want to like, if you want to read a story, you often just want to go straight back to when it first started um, and not and and then if say for example you're reading a big batman event you you don't want to read all the batmans then all the events then all the nightwing then all the robin you want to read them as and when they were published so that you're up to date every you know the character you're reading about is at the same point in the story that you are so Discworld, I would like to read in publication order. Whether I will ever do that, I don't know. I was looking at Discworld as being kind of a palette cleanser series. So where what I used Dresden Files for originally was kind of as a big palette cleanser between big chunky books. And then I got so into Dresden Files, I just marathoned through them. But maybe I could do the same with Discworld, where I'll pick up one in between each big chunky novel. Next up, a book with a title that describes it well. Now for this one, I've kind of cheated a little. Let me get the Kindle out. I've picked the book that I'm currently reading, which is Never Die by Rob J. Hayes. Uh, and uh, why does the title describe it well? Well, because the characters never die. That's it. Maybe some people will die in this book. But there's a really interesting mechanic going on or kind of plot thing going on where um, two, the two main characters have died and were brought back to life. So I think that that kind of describes it well. Uh, did I just want to get in a little mention that I've almost finished reading Never Die? Who knows? Next up, a book with a title that doesn't describe it well. Now... You're going to have to give me a lot of slack here. I am picking for this one Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. I am sure when I read it that I may, un you know, I'm not actually sure I will understand it because it's famously a complicated, uh, a complicated series. However, I think that when I read it, I will be able to um, tell you, I might be able, I might be able to tell you why it's called Gardens of the Moon, but 
Uh, I've read a few chapters of this book. Again, this was a few years ago when I was not into... Uh, when I did not have a consistent reading habit. Um, and it just completely, like... I don't remember any moons or any gardens for that matter. I probably I probably only read 10-15% of this book. Um, Malazan, which is Gods of the Moon, is the first book in the uh, Malazan Book of the Fallen, which many people may know. Uh, big booktube darling slash booktube controversial pick because a lot of people don't a lot of people don't get on with Malazan. I'm not sure if I will, um, but I do think that I would like to try and read it. Now, I'm having some genuine thoughts for next year on the channel. So I know I've only been doing uh, videos for like a month, but I'm already thinking about what will be the big events for next year, for the things that I'm going to be reading. And my, I'm really trying to make a decision between whether I want to read The Wheel of Time or Malazan. Now, pop a comment down below if you've got an opinion on that, uh, whether I should read Wheel of Time first, whether I should read Malazan first. I think that both um, are going to be really interesting for people to watch on the channel because I've never read either of those. And a lot of fans of those series really enjoy watching people go through them for the first time. I am intimidated by Malazan because of how complex I know it is. So it's not just kind of people saying, oh, this is really complicated. But I have read some of it and I don't think I understood any of what I read. Again, first, not even 100 pages I read of Malazan. So... There is that. Uh, I'm intimidated by Wheel of Time for two reasons. One, it is very long, 15 books. I originally had wanted to commit to reading The Realm of the Elderlings this year along with um, Philip Chase and um, Mike from Mike's Book Reviews. But um, I stalled out after the Farseer trilogy. Um, I read Ship of Magic, loved it started Mad Ship but um, was a bit Robin Hobbed out. I'd read too much of her in one shot because I was enjoying them so much I just wanted to read the next one but I had read, I'd spent too long reading Robin Hobb and that was that was a bit of a problem. So I think um, uh, I think that I am, yeah I don't, I really don't know what to read because if I read Wheel of Time it's 15 books and apparently three of those books are shit or at least very slow and sloggy. And some people say even more than three are very slow and sloggy. And um, there's even a specific part of the book called of the series called The Slog. Um, and I don't particularly like slogging my way through books. And I feel like if we get to that point, I may just DNF the series because I... I'm not the kind of person who pushes myself through books very well. If I have a book that I'm not loving, uh, it might take me months to read it. And I do worry because my reading habit is, my consistent reading habit of reading every single day is fairly new. So my worry is that if I get slogged out, then I might lose that reading habit, which I almost did earlier this year when I was reading a book that I was kind of slogging through. Um, I went multiple days in a row free, uh, throughout the whole pro throughout the whole book not reading at all or maybe reading like just a couple of pages um, and being like oh I'm not interested in this so that's my worry about the wheel of time um, as I said I've probably talked more about whether I should read Malazan or whether I should read the wheel of time than I have about any of the other books on this series on the series on this list but Tell me in the comments below what you think I should read. Um, final question here is, name a booktube channel with an amazing name. Now, pretty much all the booktubers that I follow um, just use their names. So, you know, Abby Salter, Philip Chase, um, Murphy Napier, uh, L Brooks. They're all just using their names. 
But uh, there is one channel that I watch you channel that I follow that isn't at someone's name, which is Library of a Viking. Now, uh, Library of a Viking is um, hosted by Johan. Uh, Johan, I, I really kind of, I feel like I uh, jive with him quite well because he doesn't read like 70 books in a year. He, he reads like a, a fairly normal amount of books. Um, and also I really like his production value. I like his set and I like his kind of energy in his videos. When he's doing the um, unpopular opinions, agree and disagree. Um, he recently did one with Mike from Mike's Book Reviews, who I really like. And um, I really thought that was quite funny. Um, uh, it's so often, uh, it's so often that they disagree with the unpopular opinions. But then every now and then you'll get one unpopular opinion that that Johan will also hold, and that's quite funny. Um, so yeah, definitely check his channel out. Um, I'm sure if you found my videos, you have watched Johan's, but um, yeah, don't uh, don't be a stranger. G uh, give them a look. So um, that was a uh, probably too long tag video. Thanks very much for watching. Um, as I said, vote down below on Malazan or Wheel of Time, and um, I will speak to you soon. Like and subscribe.